The FIA have made significant changes to the rules in the middle of the season, and it seems like the team that's hurt the most out of it is Red Bull, which can be related to their drop of performance. But with the upgrades also not correlating with the on-track data, and with the car losing its balance as well as the setup that McLaren and Mercedes have made in the past couple of races, does this rule play a pivotal role in where Red Bull have found themselves, and if so, can they bounce back in the remainder of the season? It's safe to say that the latest changes by the FIA have been examined thoroughly, because one team that has dropped significantly in performance compared to last year is Red Bull. For example, if we were to look at the points that the system has scored in the first half of the season compared to last year, we'd notice that the team has 132 points less in 2024, and the car has started to become more and more track dependent. This means that the luxury that Red Bull had last year, which was to run the car whatever way they wanted, due to the massive advantage they had compared to the rest of the grid, is now gone, and that title has gone to McLaren, who are now looking like the serious candidates to grab the Constructors' Championship for the first time in a while. But the secret might be hidden in a regulative that has been changed by the FIA, which is precisely Article 11.2.1, which has been rewritten by the governing body at the end of July. Previously, this article said that any system or mechanism that can systematically or intentionally produce asymmetric braking torques on a given axis is prohibited. A very interesting situation has been noted by the teams on the grid, as well as the F1 experts, the fact that this rule has been rewritten in the middle of the season is definitely hinting towards a scenario in which one of the teams has been able to take advantage of it. Therefore, the FIA had to intervene. This comes after the majority of the F1 media reported that Red Bull had a part on their car that the other teams complained to the FIA about. And once this part was removed, which was rumoured to be around Miami, the advantage had suddenly gone to the door. Now, Article 11.2.1 has been rewritten in a very precise way, disallowing the asymmetrical braking from any team on the grid, stating, The braking system must be designed so that within each braking circuit, the forces applied to the brake pads are of the magnitude and act as opposite pairs on a specific brake disc. Any system or mechanism that can systematically or intentionally produce asymmetric braking torques on a given axis is prohibited. Of course, this all sounds too complex to understand, but the reality is that there's a clear clue as to why this is related to Red Bull. Because if we're to take a bit of a step back and go to Australia and analyse the only race in which the RB20 suffered from a mechanical failure, we would be able to understand why the team is now related to this rewriting of the rule by the FIA. The technicians from the governing body went on to investigate the braking failure of Verstappen's right rear tyre right after the start of the race. And what they found out is that the RB20 had an inertial valve on the braking system section at the rear downstream of the brake-by-wire system. What this effectively did with the car is that the valve with the T connection received a single hydraulic pressure, which was then directed to the rear axle by this brake-by-wire system. This has a huge influence on where it can be directed with greater pressure on the left or right of the rear axle, which hugely depends on which way the car was turning through a corner. Of course, the inertial valve does not fall under the category of parts that are supplied to the team by the manufacturer of the braking system, which is Brembo, and thus it does not modify its basic characteristics when it comes to safety. Another massively important thing is that needs to be said is that the inertial valve implements its function only when the car is approaching the corner entry phase, therefore, in a straight line, at the start of the braking action, the pressure between the right and left sides remains identical with the sphere placed exactly at the centre of the T-zone. The advantages of a system like this are concentrated primarily in how the driver handles the car, and in this scenario, cornering precision is more or less guaranteed while understeer is almost impossible to achieve. Therefore, you have a certain loophole that you should not allow in the sport for the greater good of the other teams. Now Red Bull have lost a significant amount of performance from Miami onwards, and given the fact that this rule was rewritten just now, and the part was looked into a couple of races before the Miami Grand Prix, it's simply too much to be considered a coincidence. But to say that Red Bull were cheating their way in the first five races of the season is a statement of arrogance, because up until then they were just exploiting a loophole from a poorly written article by the FIA. And if this was the thing that made them superior in the first couple of races, then the catch-up from teams like McLaren and Mercedes is not as big as the drop-off in performance from Red Bull. What is worth mentioning is that while Red Bull have lost significant ground to these two teams, a huge part of it has been lost thanks to the progressive increase in the critical nature of the vehicle dynamics. 
something that both Marco and Verstappen have talked about, and not the aerodynamic problems or extreme setup issues. Of course, when the stability of your car is suffering a lot, it's safe to assume that the team would go to some unwanted ways when it comes to the setups of their car, which then puts a lot more pressure on Verstappen and Perez to extract more performance out of what is already a non-optimized version of the car. And what is further worse news for Red Bull is that the solution for their bad car is not likely to come in the next couple of weeks, especially not in Zandvoort where they will be hoping that Verstappen will have monstrous qualifying due to the fact that the overtaking here is quite limited. When talking about the RB20, Marco said, During the summer holidays, there is a total shutdown of 15 days, which means we cannot work on the machine. We need to solve our problems and understand where we went wrong, because the RB20 has lost balance compared to the first three races. It's difficult to estimate how long it will take to resolve this situation. I don't think we will find a definitive solution already in Zandvoort. We are doing intense brainstorming and have several ideas, but I can't say yet what we will implement and how. Again, this puts a lot of pressure on Red Bull to defend their Constructors' Championship to McLaren, because 42 points is definitely not a lead that they can brag about heading into the last 10 races of the season, especially when you know that the car is not nearly where it wants to be. Under the leadership of Wache, it was believed that the RB20 would be very competitive in Hungary, where they brought significant upgrades, but eventually Verstappen finished 5th and Perez finished 7th, and McLaren grabbed a 1-2 finish, which was quite disappointing for the Dutchman and his tenure in Red Bull. Apart from the pressure in the Constructors' Championship, Red Bull are now also facing a huge risk of losing Verstappen in the following period because if this rule change by the FIA proves to be the pivotal moment for the performance of the RB20, then it's safe to say that the team will be in huge trouble and the car will continue to regress in performance, as they might be forced to work with the initial version of the RB20, something that Verstappen believes is still a bit too early to do at this stage of the season. But what the team is hoping for is that the 2026 changes will see them launch a massive positive campaign with Ford, as Paul Monaghan, the chief engineer at Red Bull, said that they have to make Red Bull powertrain work and they will use every bit of knowledge they have from Honda in order to do so. Furthermore, he said, The work I've seen between the Red Bull chassis side and the Red Bull powertrain side is as good, if not stronger, than I've seen with any of our power unit suppliers. If we want to be as strong as we can be in 2026, we have to make this project work. So the challenges are there, but equally the scope to do at least as good a job, if not better one than we've enjoyed with Honda, is there for us. All of this points towards the fact that Red Bull have had a lot of issues to solve in the next 10 races, and continuing the collaboration with Perez might have hinted towards the fact that they understand the ground loss to McLaren and potentially Mercedes is irreversible, so they can only focus on the Drivers' Championship at this point. 78 points is a solid lead to have ahead of Norris with 10 races remaining, but a couple of bad races for Verstappen, which should be expected given the fact that the RB20 won't receive any upgrades while the MCL38 and the W15 will be further boosted with more performance, could change the entire narrative of 2024. With all of this in mind, do you think that Red Bull were caught red-handed by the FIA? And do you think that this rule change will affect their performance in the remainder of 2024 as well as 2025? Let us know in the comments below and once you do that, make sure to click on the video that's appearing on your screen right now.